Here we have a fetal pig dissection for Bio 182 Zoology here at Golden West College in Huntington Beach, California. And we'll start with external anatomy. Here we have the pinna. If we open the, the eye, we find the nictitating membrane. We have vibrissae, whiskers all around the snout, fungiform papilla sticking out. There's our nostril. Other external anatomy worth looking at. We have our cute little pigtail. Here's our uh, anus and your genital opening, letting, it, letting us know that this is a female pig. There were uh, little mammae all over the ventral side of this pig when we had skin on it, so you'll just have to believe me because there, there's one right now. There we go. Switching over to the muscles, we'll find ourselves with the triceps brachii here. Latissimus dorsi is roughly found in this area here. We have the deltoid here. Trapezius, great definition on our trapezius. Do you even work out, bro? Or girl, I guess you do. Um, the muscle that's been removed here was a superficial pectoral muscle. We still have one on that side if you really want to know about it. We have the brachiocephalic muscle uh, right, right here. Heads from the shoulder kind of up to the neck. I like to call it the yes muscle. Here we have the masseter as well. Uh, tensor fascia latte is found right here. Right here is this triangle. Biceps femoris here. Gastrocnemius there. We have uh, kind of a, a, a bisected sartorius here and a gracilis on the back side. That's a better sartorius on that side. External oblique are right in this area here, kind of all the over on the side of the body wall in the uh, uh, bacon area of this pig. And uh, then let's switch over to looking inside the mouth. Real quick, we've got the hard palate here, soft palate, and then underneath the soft palate or dorsal to the soft palate, we have the nasopharynx. We've got, uh, there's our tongue again. We've got some baby teeth poking out here and here. And we have the epiglottis right here. And the hole is the glottis. This whole back area common to the digestive and, and respiratory systems is the pharynx. Closing up. Working on the neck blood vessels, we have the carotid artery right here, the internal jugular here, and the external jugular here. There's our larynx, of course, which is right on our trachea um, with these muscles right in the way so we can't see it. There's our thyroid gland right there. We've got a thymus gland flopping around. There's a little piece of it right here. We have a, uh, a vagus nerve that is just right here. You can see the little piece of it right here as well. Um, looking in the shoulder, we find ourselves with two blood vessels and a nerve. We've got a uh, vagus nerve here, I'm sorry, brachial plexus here, and then subclavian artery here, subclavian vein here, right there. And then we'll open up the body. The, of course, the heart has been removed for your protection. Uh, these are uh, intercostal arteries of the red lines right here. We have a piece of the lung right there. The membrane on the inside is the parietal pleura, and then we have the visceral pleura over the surface of the lungs. Moving farther back, we have a diaphragm, and then we go posterior to the diaphragm and we find a giant liver. And then connected, kind of going through the liver is the umbilical vein. The umbilical arteries are found here, all headed to the umbilical cord here. If we look underneath the liver, we find a gallbladder. There it is right there. This is a poorly defined gallbladder. And then we have a stomach, which is largely deflated. A pyloric valve right after that, right here, pyloric valve. And leading to the duodenum, right here. There's a pancreas hiding underneath the stomach. There's our pancreas. There's our pancreas. And then this is uh, most of what I'm holding here is small intestine. See where you can see small intestine. And then we have this membrane, which is the mesentery, takes blood vessels to the small intestine. Uh, all this greenish stuff is large intestine. The specific part of large intestine, this is called the colon. We'll also find another part of the large intestine called the cecum. And there it is right there, lying over my blunt probe. It's just a dead end. And then the third part of large intestine, of course, is the rectum. Rectum. Damn near killed him. Damn near killed him. Here we're looking at some blood vessels in the posterior end of the body. There's the common iliac artery, common, I'm sorry, external iliac artery, external iliac vein. We have um, also that bright blue one there is the posterior vena cava. The kind of creamish colored red one here is the uh, aorta. The walls of it are so thick the stain doesn't actually show through. Here we have a blue blood vessel headed to the kidney, that's the renal vein. The pinkish one right here is the renal artery on your lab exam. It'll be dissected a little bit clearer than that. Since we're back here, we might as well go 
find ourselves a little reproductive system. This is a, um, it's a female piggy. And uh, if we get in really close here, so we have that little nugget right there is the ovary. The little squiggles around it, there they are, are the oviduct or also called the fallopian tubes. Those then lead to the uterus, which is uh, the two uterine horns are here, but just uterus is fine for this class. Back up, well, here's our urinary bladder. It leads to the urethra here, which then merges with the vagina into a structure called the urogenital sinus. Dorsal to the urogenital sinus, we can see that green thing coming through. That is the rectum. And our yellow. <laughs> okay, so there's our kidney. The space our kidney lies in is called the cisterna magnum. And uh, we'll go back over here to the heart. Don't forget the nails. I will. Here we have the red line called the coronary artery and a very, very poorly stained blue line uh, called the coronary vein. Uh, we, of course, have the um, pulmonary trunk right here. This uh, underneath it, underneath it is the aorta. There, I've kind of moved it aside. We can see the aorta there. Now, this particular dissection cuts the aorta and the pulmonary trunk before the ductus arteriosus. But the, we do have our first branch, which is the brachiocephalic trunk. Opening the heart, we find ourselves with the ventricular septum, the left ventricle, the left atrium, the right ventricle, the right atrium. Uh, we're finding ourselves these little strings called chordae tendinae attached to papillary muscles. We have a bicuspid valve here. A tricuspid valve would be seen on this side and is not clear enough for this video. Um, the membrane inside the heart is the endocardium. The membrane that was outside the heart was the pericardium. There still is a parietal pericardium over, over this heart, but the visceral, I'm sorry, the visceral pericardium is still over the heart. The parietal pericardium has been removed. Looking at the dorsal part of the heart, we find ourselves with the anterior vena cava right here and the posterior vena cava uh, shown here. Fast forwarding to the, don't hurt the brain. Here we have an extracted brain. Uh, pons here, medulla oblongata here, and of course our spinal cord right there. What's missing in this area is the optic chiasma or optic chiasm. We can kind of see right here just a rough outline of the pituitary and optic nerves will be coming from the optic chiasm but not on this particular brain. Here we have the longitudinal fissure which is a line right down the middle of the brain. Uh, two halves of the cer cerebrum, cerebellum shown right here on the back. Now if I very carefully open this longitudinal fissure. You can see down deep in there the part where it's joined together is called the corpus callosum. At the very anterior part of the brain, we have kind of little fragments of what was the um, olfactory lobe. We'll fast forward over here to the male real quick. And here's the male. Uh, we can tell it's a male. Here's our spermatic artery. The spermatic vein was not shown on this one for some reason. Anyway, we have our vas deferens here. It's been cut. Normally, it was right about in that position. These two, these two things, along with the spermatic vein, disappear into the inguinal canal right down that way. There's our urogenital opening, completely different spot, just posterior to the um, umbilical cord. There's our testis, and here we have our epididymis, leading to our vas deferens, which again has been cut, but it headed up that way. The, uh, if you look deep, deep in here, we can see another segment of the urethra right here, and then just lateral to the urethra, that little gland is called the bulb urethral gland. So the way this works is that uh, your general opening is here. There's a tube that leads down through here. You can see it right here. That's the urethra. Loops around here and then ends up here at the urinary bladder. This conclu concludes the field pig tour.